Hi, my name is David Macklin. I'm a family physician. I've spent my entire career working in obesity medicine. I plan to answer a couple of questions today with this video. Question one. What does it mean when I say that obesity is a real medical condition? That it's mostly inherited in our genes, it's centered in the brain, and very influenced by the environment, and it gets worse over time. Question two, successful, effective, long-term treatment exists for people living with obesity, but what is that treatment and how does it work? Good science tells us that around 70% of the risk of struggling with obesity in our lifetime is genetic, passed down from our parents. What many don't know is that these genes, the majority of them, are in the brain. We each inherit a unique appetite system. This is where your weight gets determined and regulated. It has three layers. They're all interconnected. They're called the homeostatic system, the motivation system, and the executive system. This system evolved in an environment where calories were really scarce and finding food involved work and therefore required motivation to go and get. Our prevailing understanding of obesity and why it happens is that this ancient system has collided with our modern food environment. This ultra-processed, sugar, fat, salt, taste, big portioned, everywhere, anytime, advertised to look healthy, brought to your front door environment. You might think the consequences of this collision would be complicated, but they're not. In fact, I'm gonna invite you to sit back and I'll tell you a story of how this works. And more importantly, answer these two questions. The story I will tell you is called The Gatekeeper, The Go-Getter, and The Sleepy Executive. Let's get started with The Gatekeeper. It's about time. The Gatekeeper is the first layer, the homeostatic system. Gatekeeper, tell them what you do. I defend against fat loss. The gatekeeper does this by watching this bucket of leptin. You see, fat cells in the body produce a hormone called leptin. So weight loss results in lowering leptin levels. And he is exquisitely sensitive to dropping leptin levels. If the level in this bucket starts to go down, he sees it, gets alarmed, and bam, presses the button. He does this because to our ancestors, weight loss was never good news. They didn't lose weight to look good for a wedding. They lost weight because the food supply was interrupted. This alarm gets sent up to the next level. Gatekeeper, can you explain? This button makes him work harder. Did someone call me? Is there food? We need food. We should get food. Food. This is the go-getter. He represents the middle layer, the motivational system. He motivates us to go and get food. Remember in our former environment, the motivation to go and get food was critical. Wanting is the most common name for this motivational drive, but it's also called cravings or desire or urge or impulse. Wanting acts like a wave. It rises, it crests, and it falls. Go get her. Tell them what you do. When I eat a lot of food, or really good food, this is the concept of tasty foods that are dense in calories and quick energy. The body is set up to signal our go-getter when we eat these types of survival ensuring foods. And then I learn. This is important. This system operates on a simple Pavlovian learning model. A learning takes place between these signals of food and the external settings at the moment. Look what he's writing down. Post dinner, couch, TV, coffee table, nighttime, dark windows. This is also called associative learning. And then it happens. Eventually, just these cues themselves gain the power to activate wanting, the drive to go and get. And the wanting drives excessive calorie intake and weight gain. Everything I've described so far goes on in the non-conscious parts of the brain. These things all happen without you knowing it. No actual eating decisions get made here. The go-getter just sends a wave of wanting up to the third level, the final layer, the executive system. <sighs> Did someone say executive? The sleepy executive represents the executive system. This is where all our decisions get made. 
What you need to know about the executive system is that it has two parts. The sleepy executive and beside him is the autopilot. The Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman calls these system one and system two. This is how it works. When a wave of wanting arrives at the executive system, first the autopilot will generate thoughts that are immediate and automatic, thoughts that are permission-like, thoughts that give reason why we should eat or eat more. This is called cognitive bias. Autopilot permission thoughts sound like, it's been a long day, I deserve this. I'm tired, this will give me a boost in energy. I'm on track lately, so I can. Or I'm off track lately, so what does it matter? I can have more because I exercised today. I'll have this now and I'll start again on Monday. Kahneman says that most of our decisions are made based on this type of thinking and that by nature, the sleepy executive is usually and preferably asleep. But if he is awake, he thinks differently. System two uses conscious effort, thinks slowly, deliberates, weighs the consequences. The sleepy executive is able to recognize that permission thoughts are incorrect. He can also generate his own thoughts that consider the future, thoughts that sound like, I don't really need this. I'm not hungry. I feel better if I don't. Eating this is really not in the direction of all the things that are most important to me. So there it is. This is the appetite system. Weight loss is defended against. A conditioned wave generated from underneath is shuttled up to the executive system where the autopilot convincingly describes why we should. And all we have is a sleepy executive to stand up to all of it. This system collides with the modern food environment and bam. And now you know where the differences in genetic risk are found. They're found here within these three characters. One person's gatekeeper will oppose weight loss much more strongly than someone else's. In one person, the go-getter will learn more quickly, be more sensitive to cues, and generate a taller wave of wanting. Some people's sleepy executive will be, well, sleepier. And so, obesity is a real medical condition, mostly inherited, centered in the brain, influenced by our environment, and progressive. Yeah. And now you know why. This framework answers our first question. My second question was about treatment. There are three types of treatment, and now you'll understand how they work. Behavioral therapy, medication, and surgery. You now understand that behavioral therapy is about developing skills and confidence that keep the sleepy executive as awake as possible just when he or she is most needed. Remember that the gatekeeper and the go-getter are in non-conscious parts of the brain that are inaccessible to us. We can't get there ourselves, but medication can. And so this is exactly where our best weight loss medications work. They dampen the height of the wave, making it smaller, and the go-getter becomes less active and less sensitive to cues. The gatekeeper relaxes and becomes less bothered by dropping levels of leptin. And this makes the work of the sleepy executive much easier because he's not facing a tidal wave from underneath and weight loss and weight loss maintenance become more likely. So, would you consider that past weight loss efforts were difficult not because of some flaw in your character or lack of strength or motivation or willpower, but instead because you are struggling, untreated, with a real medical condition? Both behavioral therapy and medications exist that are effective in treating this real medical condition. Please ask your physician for help in finding the right support for you. Thanks for listening.